Okay, the fall is upon us and some of you will be applying to the NSF Graduate Research Fellowship Program. That's the NSF GRFP. I applied to this program three times uh, as a senior undergrad, as a first year grad student, as a second year grad student, and I got uh, nothing, then honorable mention, then nothing again. So uh, I should say that uh, nowadays you're not even allowed to apply three times. You're allowed to apply once as an undergraduate and once as a grad student. I would encourage you to apply in your second year, although the, the, the data uh, are not quite in yet because the rules were just changed uh, fairly recently. But the second year will allow you to uh, have, an under, or have a graduate GPA and also have a chance um, to, uh, to perhaps publish or uh, present your research in conferences. So while I was never successful in getting the NSF GRFP, about eight of my students uh, have received it. So those are undergraduates and, uh, and current graduate students. And I've also been a reviewer for the NSF GRFP. Now, how does that work? How does the review process work? So basically, uh, sometime uh, after the deadline, usually around January after the, uh, after the proposals are submitted, uh, they are sent to professors in your area or a, a, a very closely related area or moderately closely related area. And we get about 20 to 25 or so proposals, if my recollection uh, holds. And we rank these proposals. We give them a, a numerical score, uh, 1 to 50. Now, uh, what, if, uh, what if I didn't eat lunch that day and I'm feeling hangry and maybe I, I rate them all low and you get me as a reviewer? That's not such a bad thing because all of the, re all of the reviewers have their scores normalized so that nobody gets really uh, unlucky by drawing a particularly you know, kind of hard-ass reviewer, uh, so, so to speak. So then after all the scores are submitted, we do a, a teleconference with the other reviewers that have reviewed similar, uh, similar applicants. And the goal of that meeting is to talk about the top applicants and also to discuss applicants that have disparate scores. So maybe, maybe, two, maybe a 48, a 49, and a, and a, and a 20, you know, of course, after the, uh, after the normalization takes place. So then once all of those, the, the top applicants and the applicants with disparate scores are discussed, the reviewers have a chance to change their score and then uh, submit their final recommendations. And after that, the program managers make the final call on who, uh, who gets it. So um, let's look at a couple of the components of the application. One of them is the, uh, the research statement or research proposal. Now, the, what we're looking for in the research proposal is the candidate's command of the scientific method. Is there a clear hypothesis? Are experiments proposed or, or simulations proposed that can be tied is in, a, in as explicit a way as possible by the applicant to results that either uh, hypothetical results that will either confirm or, or, uh, or, or will either falsify or not falsify the, uh, the hypothesis. So, uh, so use the word hypothesis. We're reading a lot of these applications and it really helps to see uh, that you understand the scientific method. So uh, another thing you want to uh, emphasize is, uh, is uh, not emphasize, but you want to emphasize your work through the use of nice figures. And these could be one to two figures. One of the figures should be a, a nice color, colorful overview that kind of graphically explains what you're trying to, uh, to show, uh, what methods you're going to use, and how you'll know if you're successful in, uh, in carrying it out. You also have a uh, broader impacts uh, paragraph. It's 
very useful to have a broader impact paragraph that's not only the, uh, the real world result or, or the, the outcome of your research, uh, either technologically, if it's science or engineering, or, uh, or what understanding for, uh, for, the, uh, for the social sciences or, uh, or the natural sciences. Um, uh, how are you going to integrate research and education? So how, is your, how are you going to disseminate results? Um, maybe you have a website, maybe you have some social media presence that you're using, maybe you're going to reach out to, uh, to underrepresented groups, for example. And that uh, brings me to the personal statement. So the personal statement is your chance to, uh, to really tell, uh, tell your story. Uh, try not to be pedestrian here and start out with the reason I want to be a mechanical engineer is because I played with Legos as a kid because 90% of the, of the personal statements that, that the reviewers are going to see start out in a very similar way. So you want to be a little bit more colorful than that. Uh, if possible. You also want to highlight any uh, adversity you had to overcome. Don't make anything up because you don't you you need to be or don't be disingenuous. Don't overblow something that 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 didn't really have an influence on you. Uh, if 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 you uh, if you feel that uh, that you had a lot of uh, advantage growing up, then you want to highlight uh, in what ways you have or plan to, or ideally both, uh, give back to the community. Again, integration of research and education is a very important part of the, uh, the personal statement uh, and, uh, and the broader impacts criterion in NSF judging in general. Um, so, uh, so, so what you wanna do here, um, uh, so your personal story, adversity, any outreach or volunteering activities that uh, you either did or plan to do. Even if you did some, it's important to also, uh, also put your plans somewhere so that the reviewers and the NSF know that you're committed to this, uh, this idea. Um, how, do we know, how do we know you're committed? Uh, one of the, the, the uh, things that we look at is, uh, is letters. So pick, uh, pick three people who know you well enough to be detailed. So you want detailed letters. Detailed letters are great uh, because if it's just one paragraph, um, you know, maybe you don't know three people, uh, three supervisors or three, uh, three faculty members, or maybe a, a, a boss at an internship or something uh, that well, uh, you know, try to get it at least one or two um, people who know you uh, well enough to really go to bat for you and write a detailed letter talking about specific instances in which uh, you, uh, you showed off uh, your talents. Uh, other components of the uh, application, publications, or posters. The application pool is so competitive now, you really have to have something here. Um, and it doesn't have to be a first author paper, but it does have to be some kind of documented research experience. Because remember, if you're going to grad school, you're going to spend four to six years of your 20s uh, in graduate school. We want to know, or the committee, uh, the, the reviewers will want to know how committed uh, you are. Uh, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, depending uh, on how you feel about this, GPA is a really important requirement. The NSF GRFP no longer requires the uh, the GRE, and that's uh, that's good for a number uh, a number of reasons. Uh, unless um, unless you have a really good GRE score, in which case you don't get to use it. 
so the GPA, there's really no, uh, there's, there's, while there's no GPA cutoff, uh, it does not hurt to have your GPA as high as possible. Um, so those of you who are seniors right now or already graduate students, there's not much you can do about that, but you, if, if it's not where you want it to be, but you can make the rest of the, of the application competitive. So like I said, I tried at this uh, three times myself as a student. Um, uh, the best I got was honorable mention on the second time. I still got into the grad schools that I wanted, so I got into some, some really top grad schools, and now I'm, I'm a professor at an R1 research institution, so this is not the end of the world if you don't get it uh, at all, uh, but, uh, but it, it can certainly, uh, certainly help you if you do get it, but, but uh, don't be... Uh, don't beat yourself up if you don't because only about 10 percent do but i hope i said something useful here and uh, let me know in the comments um, and i'll do the best i can to uh, to help out cheers